The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship today. It's so good to see all of you. So good to see me uh, today. I'm glad we could be together in worship. Listen, in future Sundays, prayerfully consider coming up closer. We Lutherans don't set up front typically, but you'll sound better and probably love being closer to one another. Consider that next Sunday. I'd like you to find your pew pad sometime during the service, the red notebook that's in the aisleway area there to sign in, please. Want to welcome our special guest of honor today. Jennifer's Aunt Margaret is with us. We give God thanks and praise. We're glad you're here. Welcome. Thank you so much. We appreciate Jennifer and all the many gifts she brings, including leading our music today, which we will hear in a moment. I uh, wanted to let you know that next Sunday we'd like to take a noisy offering. If you're not familiar, that's bringing your coins, your green coins, your check coins. <laughs> Get it? Is that a little funny? Next week for the Shepherd's Fund. It's for the Shepherd's Fund, which is a fund we use here to help uh, members among us. The Shepherd's Fund, next week, noisy offering. Bring your noisy coins and whatever else you might like to donate. Uh, I know also I just wanted to say uh, thank you to our Facebook family of faith for joining us. Thanks to Jim who's operating the system today. If you are watching this later in the week, please come and join us at St. Andrew's at 9 o'clock for worship. Uh, so good morning to our Facebook family of faith. Your newsletter was just emailed out to you. I know many of you spent hours uh, reading it, downloading it, and printing it. I just had it in my notes today to lift it up as a communication tool for the life of the ministry, for the life of the ministry. So please don't ignore your newsletter. Take a moment, read through the articles, make notes on your calendar for things that are coming up. Uh, MJ works really hard on it, and I just wanted to lift that up today uh, for all of you. Uh, if you looked at your newsletter, you would see that in a few weeks on July 30th, we won't be here for worship. We'll be joining our family of faith, our second congregation at Faith Lutheran at 10 a.m. on the 30th for a joint worship service together. So that's on the 30th, and they're providing the food and in looking forward to having us with them at worship on the 30th. As we enter into this new month and the holiday ahead of us, we thank God for all those who served uh, to give us the freedom that we have on July 4th. So as you're hither and yon on Tuesday, take a few minutes out to give thanks to God for the freedoms we have in our country and those who helped us uh, earn those freedoms on July 4th. This new month brings us a new order to the worship. You'll notice it in the Kyrie, a little different music and setting. So jump right in and sing with joy and thanksgiving. Uh, we're always in prayer as a community of faith and Anne uh, Demery Colon asked for prayers today for her daughter-in-law from Texas, Lisa Weber, who's having surgery. Lisa's daughter, um, if I understand this right, Anne's granddaughter is in Valparaiso at a camp and Anne's heading up there this morning to be with her today. Also, we continue our prayers for Dale is here today. Dale, we're with you in spirit as you go through uh, your chemo again. Uh, Bobby Moore and Crystal Wall uh, also fighting their own cancer battles. We uh, pray for them, we reach out, we love them and we're thinking about them. And uh, also a member of faith, Don Damro. Don has helped out with Friendship Bible Study, also is in a, a cancer uh, uh, issues and health concerns around that. So please uh, join me in praying for Dale, Bobby, Crystal, Don, and others in our community of faith. With that having uh, been said and shared, let's begin our time of worship. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. 
for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all are welcome. That's our motto here, but we're also singing that. Selected verses today. 641 is the hymn number.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 28. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah 
in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. Prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. We'll read responsively selected verses from Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever I will sing. From the age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. Happy are the people who know the festival shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6. Paul writes, Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present with your members to sin as instruments of wickedness. Present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of of righteousness, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of one of whom you obey? either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were, laves, when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you have then gift from the things of which you are now, now ashamed. The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord.
Friends, it's the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 10th chapter. Jesus says, whoever welcomes me welcomes you. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Seems like a little funny would be good today uh, on this overcast morning when this came through my social media. Uh, I had to share it with you that a woman um, had been going on tough times and every morning would come out onto her front porch and she would just raise her hands. You know, charis- we're doing our neighbor's faith. So let's say she was charismatic, Pentecostal, raising her hands and praising the Lord and asking God to give her a blessing. She needed food for her family. Times were tough and she would pray out loud uh, every morning on her front porch. Eventually a a neighbor moved in that was atheist and they began to have a shouting match in the morning as she would lift up her hands in prayer for her needs and the atheist would say there's no such thing as God and he would shout over at his porch. It didn't stop her for this went on for a while and finally the atheist thought well I'll I'll trick her. I'm going to Uh, go get some groceries I'll put them on her porch and let her think that that's God who who provided so one morning the woman comes out her porch is filled with groceries there's money and some envelopes she's so thankful so happy raises her hands thank you Lord thank you Lord I I know you love me and you provided for me today and the atheist pops out of the bushes and says ah there is no God I told you that I bought those groceries for you And the woman didn't miss a beat. She said, thank you, Lord, for these groceries, and you made the devil pay for them. (laughs) Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, friends, we're continuing on in our summer sermon series called Our Neighbor's Faith. It's a book that's from our publishing house, our Lutheran publishing house, uh, Augsburg Fortress, Our Neighbor's Faith. We started in June. We looked at the Catholic faith tradition on that day, I wore uh, a black uh, suit coat and a clerical collar, the, the black ones like the, the Catholic priests do. Today, I'm modeling, and you don't look at me and think hip right away, but I'm modeling some, some cool red, white, and blue stuff for you today. Uh, on the 11th, we, we remembered our and talked about our Jewish brothers and sisters. We went then on the um, 18th into the Islamic faith tradition. On the 25th, last week we did the uh, um, African American Methodist Church, and today it's the Buddhist faith tradition. What about those Buddhists today? Uh, Is it the orange robe and the monk that we see on TV or in other places? Uh, Maybe, maybe not. It's a little complicated. Uh, The book Our Neighbor's Faith says that talking about Buddhism is like trying to describe a snowflake or trying to describe Christianity. It doesn't fit neatly into one section, one book, one piece of of, uh, learning. Just as an aside, as we talk today about the Buddhist faith tradition, this week my magazine Spirituality and Health came in the mail. You probably can't see it, but it says Enlightenment. This is a Buddhist um, uh, area of for their worship. They try to achieve enlightenment, and I'll speak about that in a minute, but it says Enlightenment Today what it means and how to get there, all right here in this little magazine. So my point is, in a contemporary current edition of Spirituality and Health comes discussion, articles about the Buddhist faith tradition and this idea of enlightenment. Enlightenment. I've read the magazine. I've looked it up. I'm not sure I can directly pinpoint what enlightenment is, but in the Buddhist faith tradition, it's to be free from suffering, uh, no more reincarnation, and you've achieved this, this mecca, this high, uh, spiritual uh, high and um, peace, deep peace, and they call that uh, an, an enlightenment. Buddhists believe that the human life is one of suffering, and we can all uh, agree with that. It's one of suffering, and that meditation, 
spiritual and physical labor, good behavior, are ways to achieve enlightenment or nirvana. Nirvana is their term for this enlightened place. Enlightenment, as I said, I tried to get uh, my arms around it. It's, it's the Buddhist belief that in suffering, death, and rebirth, but a state of spiritual knowledge and deep understanding is this area of enlightenment. A place of deep spiritual understanding and knowledge is what it means to be enlightenment. They understand only one person has made it to this enlightenment, and that is the Buddha himself. Uh, and I'll say something about that in just a second. It originated in South Asia around the 5th century, spread across Asia and all through the world. This Buddha, the word Buddha means enlightened one. The word Buddha means enlightened one. They understand that the enlightened one, the Buddha, who was born in the 1st century, is named Siddhartha Gautama. Siddhartha Gautama. I have a sheet on this out on the table. These are also posted on our website if you want more information later. Um, but the Buddhists don't believe in any deity or any kind of God. They just understand this Buddha to have achieved enlightenment, and that's their goal. Or it's called nirvana also. They believe that he did this and achieved this state of enlightenment underneath a tree in India, in a city named Bihar. B-I-H-A-R, in Bihar, India. And now this tree of awakening, they call it, is a place of a major pilgrimage for all Buddhas, Buddhist folks to go to this place in India, to this tree in Bihar, where he was found to have had this awakening and achieve this enlightenment. Buddhism teaches four noble truths, friends, four noble truths, which I think we can get our head around. The first one is that everyone suffers. Everybody suffers. All suffering comes from desire, which is their second belief. All suffering comes from desire. The third truth is, is it is possible to stop this suffering and achieve enlightenment with the fourth truth, which is the, to follow then the Eightfold Path. So they believe in suffering, all suffering comes from desire. Uh, it, it is possible to end this suffering in their third truth, which leads to the fourth truth, which is to achieve enlightenment and end suffering. You must follow this eightfold path. This eightfold path is about right thinking and right viewing. This eightfold path all starts with the word right. The first one is to have right views. Second one is to have right aspirations. You don't have to take notes. It's okay. Right aspirations, right speech, right conduct. To have right living. Hello, sinners. Right living, an honest living. To have right effort, right mindfulness, and right meditation. That's the eightfold path to enlightenment. Your views, your aspirations, your speech, your conduct, your living... You're, you're putting forth an effort, your mindfulness, and your meditation. It's not a linear program, but it's an encompassing way of living out your life. It's an all-encompassing way of living out your life, this eightfold truth in Buddhism. There are three schools of Buddhism which are mainly geographic. One is in China, Taiwan, and Japan. A second one comes out of Sri Lanka and Cambodia and Thailand. Thailand. The third one is Tibet and Nepal. We've all heard of a Tibetan Buddhist that's been pretty famous in our world today. The head of the Tibetan Buddhist is the Dalai Lama. So there's a familiar touch point with Buddhism for us. As I said, to try and describe Buddhism by their own description out of that booklet, Our Neighbor's Faith, is like trying to describe a snowflake or Christianity. So they have the fourfold truths leading to this uh, eight path, the eight points path. It leads to nirvana, which is the end of suffering. This nirvana, nirvana is something that they achieve and reach enlightenment. Buddhism came to America through immigration. Through immigration, the first Buddhist temple was founded in 1853 and is in San Francisco. 1853, San Francisco. They worship at temples and monasteries and even in their own homes where they'll light candles and worship in their own way, 
Worship includes, in the Buddhist faith tradition, chanting, incense, silent meditation, and maybe a talk by a monk or a priest. That's how the Buddhist faith tradition folks worship. Chanting, incense, silent meditation, talk by a monk or a priest. Obviously, while Buddhism has much to offer the world, and they claim that each of us has a little Buddhist, a little Buddha inside of us that's aware of the suffering and wants to be free of that in this enlightened nirvana place, I think the best comparison we could come to would be that our nirvana, our enlightenment, our place is going to be heaven and that our suffering is, in our tradition is carried by Christ so that it lessens that impact upon ourselves. And on some level, we get a little nirvana each day at worship, through baptism, communion, and through the word. The Buddhists uh, have a prayer that I'd like to close out with. The Buddhist prayer, they pray with folded hands, I turn to you, supreme, unchanging friend. I request from the depths of my heart the light of your wisdom to heal my suffering and nourish me with your goodness. Again, a prayer from the Buddhist faith tradition. With folded hands, I turn to you, supreme, unchanging friend. I request from the depth of my heart the light of your wisdom to heal my suffering and nourish me with your goodness. Amen. Just again, it's a, impossible to cover it in any real depth. It, we're dipping our toe in the ocean of the faith tradition. I invite you to pick up a sheet out on the table or go to our website where they're all there from our various other faith traditions. Next week, it's the Baptist faith tradition, followed by the following week, we'll look at the Hindu faith. What's, it, what's going on with the Hindu faith tradition? And then on the 23rd of July, it's a little bit open. I had originally said Presbyterian, we've already looked at the Methodist faith, but if you have one, a faith tradition you'd like more information about, uh, don't hesitate to let me know, and we can do that on the 23rd. So next week will be the Baptist, then we'll do Hindu. Then on the 30th, when we gather at faith, let's look at a Lutheran faith tradition. What's going on with us Lutherans? We're all subdivided, and so let's look at the National Association of Lutheran Churches that's out in our area here and uh, Lutheran Church, the Missouri Synod, and we can all do that on the 30th when we gather together uh, at our joint worship service. Now let's sing our hymn of the day as we gather at your table. Please stand as you're able for the singing of the hymn.
Friends, let us confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for a resolve to serve all in need. God, in your mercy. We pray for creation, for all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions. God, in your mercy. We pray for this nation and all nations, for presidents, governors, and legislators, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated, guide us in the ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy. We pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for those who are ill, for any near death, and for all who grieve. God, in your mercy. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents, grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists, God, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. Turn and share that peace, one with another. We thank you for your gifts of offering that you make either today or online. And then we give thanks for those by singing the offertory. And it says stand again. I know you just sat, so make your own uh, choice.
sky. You are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It's our duty and it's our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, in whom you will give all things new in a day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this to remember me. Again after supper he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is a new covenant, a new promise in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. As we remember our Lord, we remember the prayer that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
beautiful hymn of the church sums up what we just did in Holy Communion. Amazing grace. Congregation stands. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in that grace. Amen. Amen. generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, before the final blessing, just a reminder, I announced that next week we'll receive a noisy offering, whatever you can bring to make some noise. So we'll go to our Shepherd's Fund to help members of our family of faith. That's next week. Receive this blessing that the God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and forever to the end of the age. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.